Hi, my name is Lauren Richards and today I'm going to be explaining to you the requirements for an interlocutory injunction in intellectual property cases. So when are interlocutory injunctions used? Well, an interlocutory injunction is an injunction obtained before the final determination of the rights of the parties and framed so as to endure until the hearing and determination of the preceding concern. The usual purpose of an injunction is to maintain the status quo between the parties pending the trial. In order to obtain an interlocutory injunction, the applicant will generally need to establish the following. Firstly, the plaintiff will need to demonstrate that there's a serious issue to be tried. In Australian Broadcasting Corp against O'Neill, the court outlined the test for determining whether there is a serious question to be tried. The plaintiff must essentially make out a prima facie case or a rebuttable presumption that at the trial, the applicant would obtain relief. Secondly, the plaintiff will need to show that attempts to rectify the situation other than by order have failed. Unless the matter is urgent, ideally the plaintiff will want to be able to demonstrate that they have tried to solve the matter with the other party before lodging their application. Letters of demand or attempts at mediation, for example, are all pieces of evidence that will form part of an application presented to the court. The court will essentially need to see that, despite attempts to resolve the dispute, it has been unsuccessful. Thirdly, the plaintiff will need to show that there is a reason for urgency and that the applicant has acted promptly. The court will not look favourably on applicants who drag their feet in making an application. A fourth element the plaintiff will want to be able to show is that damages alone are not enough to cure the defendant's wrongdoing. For example, in copyright cases where the real issue is a failure to pay license fees, the courts may be less willing to provide injunctive relief on the grounds that damages alone would be enough to meet the plaintiff's requirements. Conversely, this is unlikely to be the case in trademark or passing off issues where the risk of permanent damage to the plaintiff's reputation is considerable. Finally, the balance of convenience must favour the order. This requires the court to weigh up the applicant's interests against the defendant's. By some degree, this will be tipped in the plaintiff's favour by providing an undertaking to pay damages incurred by the defendant as a consequence of the injunction if the plaintiff is ultimately unsuccessful at trial. In the case of Samsung Electronics against Apple, one of the matters the court was required to consider in assessing the balance of convenience was whether the applicant would suffer irreparable harm, for which damages would not be an adequate remedy if an injunction were not granted. The court ultimately has discretion in deciding whether to award an injunction, and any delay or conduct by the plaintiff contributing to a lack of clean hands will be relevant to the exercise of that discretion. Thank you for listening and I hope you enjoyed this video. 